Hey folks, how's it going? So thank you for coming back. Now, if you don't know me, this is first time meeting me, then my name is Jay. I'm the weird guy on this channel reviewing hi-fi components. Um, but most importantly, music and audio is my biggest passion and our biggest passion on this channel. So if you share the similar type of passion, then please consider subscribing, commenting on this video, and liking the video. Now, if you do like the video, that helps me out. That helps our channel grow. So if you do like the video, I appreciate it very much. Now, if this is not our first time meeting and you've seen me around, then thank you for coming back. Thank you for being a subscriber. Thank you for being a supporter. And it really means a lot to me, guys. Now, today we're taking a look at the Burson Audio Conductor 3. Now, this is a pre-amplifier, a DAC, and also a headphone amplifier. So this is very, very well thought out units. Now, when, the, when I first see a unit, the first thing that comes to my mind is how well is the unit thought out so that the end user doesn't have any problems so that you don't bang yourself in the head going like, how do I make this work? Sure, a unit can sound great, but if it's not well thought out, then there can be problems operating the unit, using it, the user friendliness and the end, um, end user's experience um, is very important to me. Now, here we have a unit that had, to me, I think is very well thought out in terms of construction, the components used, um, the, the capability of the unit, as well as sound. So I think this unit is fabulous and we'll get into why. But here's the thing, this unit is $1,800 and I thought for the entire time of the review that this was $3,000. Um, don't know why, but that's what I thought until I looked up the price just recently. Uh, the link will be in the description below for you to check out. But this unit, in every way, even though it's integrated in a preamp, you know, you can use it as a preamplifier, a DAC, a headphone amplifier, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like um, each part is compromised to match one another in a certain aspect. So when a unit is integrated, the idea is that, well, it's not as good as just a DAC. It's not gonna be good as just a preamp. Well, that's true in certain cases, and that is true with this unit as well compared to some units out there. But the all-around performance of this unit really, really excels at this price point. And I, and I, this product has been out for a few years, and you know I've heard about the good, good stuff, but I never thought it would be this good until I actually tried it. Now we're gonna get into um, some of the well thought out designs as well. But before we do, um, we're gonna go into some of the components used here. So here we have um, two ESS Sabre DACs being used in this unit. So we have two of them. And then we also have Bluetooth uh, functionality for 5.0 Bluetooth uh, connection. So you can do Bluetooth with this unit if you wish to connect it that way and use that as a source. So we'll talk about that in the uh, upcoming part of this video. But first let's dive into some of the connections that this unit provides. So here is the front panel of the Bursting Conductor 3, and we have quite a lot to cover, so we'll go straight into it. But before we do, the flickering you see on the screen here is due to the camera, it's not due to the product. The product does not flicker. Um, I know it's kind of annoying, but I apologize. There's nothing I can do about it, so please do bear with me. Now here we have the sw little switch here, which is the power and the standby button. And then we have the two dual headphone quarter inch output and you have the microphone input. So interestingly, you can use this microphone input to uh, record, talk to people on Skype, and if you wanna play games and talk to someone, you can do that as well, Discord or whatever. Uh, you can use that microphone input as long as it's a 3.5 millimeter um, input. Now here we have the uh, input selection. So if you go into the input selection, you can choose from you know Bluetooth, optical, USB, RCA, um, all that stuff right here. And you can choose it by rotating the volume knob and then pressing it on the, the volume knob to select it. Now here we have the output choices, so it works this exact same way. Um, and we have the various choices here right now. And then here I have these settings. And if you go into the settings, you have all the different um, options from um, the the level so you have low and high level and then you have the different types of filters 
and you have all the choices here to make um, in this setting as you please. And then here, the interesting thing about this unit is clicking this unit, uh, it actually rotates the orientation of the screen, which means that you can have this unit sideways like a mini slim computer. If you don't have space on your desktop or in your rack space in your stereo system, you can turn this unit sideways and the orientation will help you with that. So very well thought out for sure. So just to show you the settings again, if you click on the settings, there is just a lot of variations that you can fine tune the unit to your liking. Um, I'm not gonna go over every single one, just impossible. I mean, there's six different types of filters here. So to give you an idea, if you click on the filter, and then you can switch to all the six different types of filters. And then plus you have the other options as well. Um, there is just so many variations. Now it doesn't change the overall sound of the unit, the overall tonal characteristics of the unit stays where it is. This is just to kind of fine tune a little bit to your liking. It's like little tweaking so that it will just click right in with your system or with the sound type of sound you like. So there you go. You have very many, many different types of choices to choose from here. And again, I think this is very well thought out and I love it. So here is the back of the Conductor 3. Here we're gonna talk about the different types of uh, connections here. So we have the power input, obviously. We have the USB-C um, input, or you can use this as a Wi-Fi antenna. Or here we have the Bluetooth as well. And then we have the coax and the optical as well. And then we have the RCA input one, RCA input two. And then we have the pre-out and the DAC out. So you can use this as a preamplifier and you can talk about, we'll talk about that. And also we, you can use this as a DAC only as well. So very versatile, of course, and also, like I said, very well thought out. So we'll talk about how I use this unit and I used it in practically every way possible, but I used it in two main ways in my desktop system and also in my stereo system. I'll talk about the desktop system first and then I'll talk about the stereo system. So my desktop system, I have two configurations. I have uh, headphones for using headphone outputs, and we'll talk about that first. So headphone outputs, obviously uh, I've started this channel with headphones, and as you guys know, I have a large collection of headphones uh, from Hyphenman to Sennheiser to Odyssey, you know, AKG, and I use practically every headphone that I had on this unit, and that's probably why this review took so long, but I really enjoyed it. Um, now this unit is pretty neutral as far as I can tell uh, uh, when it comes to headphone section. Uh, very good texture, very good resolution, but I want to put emphasis on texture. The instruments, the tonal balance just sounds right on this unit. And especially with something like the Sennheiser HD600, which is a pretty neutral headphone to begin with, the texture and the balance and the uh, uh, detail retrieval was all there. And there was some type of synergy there in my opinion. Uh, it just clicked and it just sounded right. Now, usually when it sounds so good with one type of headphone, like a dynamic headphone, it doesn't so sound so, and usually, I'm not saying always, but usually when a headphone amplifier sounds good with one type of headphone, like uh, a dynamic headphone, it doesn't sound as good with a planner headphone or a different type of drivers. So that was my experience. And so I expected the same thing. I connected some of the planar headphones to this unit, expecting, well, it's not gonna sound as good as, let's say, some of the other units out there like iFi, Audio, or whatever. And to my surprise, um, I think it's the best that I've heard with a hi fi man headphone. With a planar type of headphone, I, it just sounded so clean, textured, the resolution and sound stage was just to die for. And so the headphone section was uh, very, very good in my opinion. And this can practically power anything because I believe it outputs like 7.5 watts in class A in uh, 16 ohms. So it can practically drive anything. Uh, it drove all the headphones that I had and um, to a very satisfac satisfactory level and headroom and, uh, and, and dynamic and punch. So it had a lot of authority in the bass region as well um, for a headphone amplifier. So that's one way I used it and I really enjoyed it. Um, and the, the, the detailed resolution and sense of space uh, using this unit with, you know, with headphones was quite astonishing. And I played some games because I'm stuck at home uh, with my friends and I, we played Modern Warfare Warzone, which is a very 
big multiplayer game and people run around and you have to hear footsteps and stuff. And I could hear, you know, a lot of people, you know, moving and stuff from a distance while my friends, you know, some of, some of my friends struggled to hear what I heard. So I had very good spatial information uh, with this unit. So even in gaming, okay? So just wanted to get out there. I know some of you guys are not gaming fans, but uh, I'm not either, but I, I like to play games sometimes, okay? Um, and then on the second setup I had in my desktop, I use it as a pre-out for my studio monitors. Now, when I do video editing, when I do any type of um, audio mixing or stuff like that, playback is very important to me. And I also don't want to have headphones on my head 24 seven, it hurts my head. So sometimes I wanna lay in my bed, you know, on my couch, whatever, and I wanna play my studio monitors, watch Netflix or something like that. So I use um, the Atom Audio currently, but I have, um, I had used Klipsch with this unit, um, RP5M, I think. Anyways, I used many different type of studio monitors that came in for review. And what I found was that the pre-out on this is very, very good. Now, to give you a reference, I recently reviewed the SMSL DAC, um, and I'll link to that in the description below as well. But the DAC, that DAC, okay, it was really good, but the pre-out section wasn't so good, like I mentioned. Um, but when I used this unit particularly, the, the studio monitors just opened up, just bloomed. It was just like, boom, you know, just the resolution change, the textural change, it sounded like a whole different level of monitor. It felt like I upgraded the monitor instead of upgrading the pre-out or, or, um, or the DAC. It just sounded just whole another world of texture, resolution, and sound state. Like, like every aspect changed. Every aspect improved to my liking. So that's what I found with this unit. And you immediately know that it's a high tier of a, um, of a component when you hook it up and there's an immediate change, immediate spatial information, immediate texturization, uh, immediate better tonality, you know. And if you, I'm sure you guys experience this as well when you connect a better component. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, well, you know, $5,000 DAC compared to a $6,000 DAC, both have really good reviews, you know, both do excellent things in the same areas. It's really hard to tell, but this is not that story. This is like, boom, like, you know. <laughs> so that was very immediate, uh, you know, upgrade. So now talking about how I used it in my stereo setup. Now I used it in many different ways, but first let's talk about how I used it as a source. So I used it as a source using Bluetooth 5.0 capability on this unit, and I ran it to a uh, integrated amplifier that had a pre-amplifier uh, pre and an amplifier section. So like the Sound Artist, Paris Sound, HIN6, or even the Hegel, H190 and H120. And I'm pretty familiar with these units and what I found was that even though going from um, a streamer that's built into the Hegel to a Bluetooth, I didn't feel like I was losing too much. Now, I do have a bias with Bluetooth. You know, you guys know how I feel about Bluetooth, but if I remove that bias, to be very honest with you, I didn't feel like I was playing Bluetooth. I felt like I was playing CDs or actually streaming. And the sense of resolution, the sense of spatial information was there, the texture was there. So everything I experienced with the headphone output section was still there. And again, it seemed pretty darn neutral with very good detail retrieval. Uh, at no time did I find it to be edgy or bright at all. In fact, I think that's partially due to the op amp in this unit. Now the op amp is um, swappable, so you can switch diff to different ones, but the ones that I was using with this unit is called the uh, Vivid V6. And this unit, um, I think, it, I, I believe this is the reason why, because when I used the stock one, I found it to be slightly edgy, but with the uh, upgraded op amp, I didn't feel that at all. I found it to be very, very texturized, with great information, but not no edge to it whatsoever. So the second way I use this unit in my stereo system is using it as just a preamplifier. So using my Hegel H190 as a streamer and the DAC inside it, I uh, used the fixed output and then plugged into this unit and ran this unit into an amplifier like the first watt and some of the class D, class AB amplifiers. I ran into many different types of amplifiers. And what I realized was that when I use this unit with a, um, 
you know, as a preamplifier compared to some of the higher end components like Modri LS100 or the LTA or even some of the higher end uh, preamplifiers I used, this unit was matched very well. And I was very surprised because this unit, um, you know, isn't integrated, but the preamp section sounds like as if it was very well, you know, thought out, again, very well taken care of. The pre-out section didn't suffer at all. The texture, the spatial information, the uh, resolution that I experienced with the output section of this headphone amplifier was still there. Exact same thing. The only thing was that in addition to that, every time I used this as a pre-amplifier, I felt like everything sounded more fuller. It sounded more body to it, um, slammed to it. So I really liked that. So the detail retrieval was there and I used this as a pre-amplifier with satisfaction. Now this also comes with a remote, very sleek, small remote. And so I used this uh, remote and it was very easy to use. So those are the main ways I use this unit in my system. Now I know you guys are gonna ask me, you know, how does it compare to some of the higher end DACs that I reviewed in the channel? You know, how about preamplifier and all that stuff? But, you know, I very rarely recommend integrated units, you know, if you're just wanting a DAC, right? So this is a preamp, headphone, and a DAC. So very rarely do I say, okay, if you want just a DAC, just buy a DAC, okay? Unless you need a headphone amplifier, unless you need a preamplifier, but this is an exception. I rarely say that because, you know, the performance level is different, right? You're not paying $1,800 of performance for just the pre-out section in most units. This unit, I think, is really best bang for the buck in every way possible. Uh, even if you're getting this just as a DAC, I recommend it. Because the DAC, the resolution, the, the performance level is there. Even if I'm using just this just as a DAC, I won't have any problems. I don't feel like I'm losing anything because you know it, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful DAC. It is, it is an incredible DAC. And so I definitely recommend you take a look into this uh, unit if you just want to use it as a DAC. And it's comparable to something like the Dana Phillips Aries 2 that I reviewed, um, you know, Metro Acoustics Onyx, you know, it has that body and slam that, you know, the Onyx provided before that I experienced with this unit. Now, in terms of the overall sound signature though, I think it is very similar to the SMSL in terms of how uh, linear and how neutral it sounds. And I think that is the uh, tonal thing here. But again, you have a lot of filter options here to choose from if you want to tweak it a little bit to your liking. So in terms of sound signature, it's pretty neutral. It's a pretty neutral DAC. Um, it doesn't add much color coloration in my opinion. So whether you use it as just a DAC, a preamplifier or a headphone amplifier, it has all the similar characteristics um, in sound quality and tonal balance and all that stuff. And also I think in each category, even if it was just a DAC for $1,800, I think it punches above that. You know, if it was just a preamplifier at $1,800, I think it punches up above that. So each category, I think it punches above the price point of the $1,800 price point, which is very impressive, very impressive. So I think this unit is very, very promising in my opinion. So if you have multiple uses, for this unit, then definitely this is a no-brainer. If you want a headphone amplifier that is powerful enough to drive most of your headphones with great authority, then this is there. Now, th is this an improvement from like the antenna Frips DAC or the uh, SMSL DAC? Well, that's kind of hard to answer. I think it is an upgrade from the SMSL DAC with the Aries 2 DAC. I do believe that the Aries 2 DAC is more airy, but this has more authority in the bass region. So it's different sound, uh, type of sound signature there and depends on your system at this point. But uh, if you want Bluetooth capability, if you were thinking of getting the SMSL DAC because you want Bluetooth capability, I think that this unit does far better. Of course, the price point difference is there, but this unit does the Bluetooth much better in my opinion, sounds better. And also the um, capability of the 7.5 watt uh, in class A headphone section is very attractive. So if you have multiple uses for this unit, then it's a no brainer. Um, if you have an idea of using this unit as just a preamplifier or one usage like DAC, preamp, or just a headphone amplifier, then uh, you may have other choices, but this is something that is very neutral. And if you want something that's very neutral, then this unit stand on its own when it comes to each of the categories. And I don't think you're wasting your money if you're getting it just for one 
you know, usage uh, purpose. So that's pretty much it for this review. I think this unit is very well thought out. The casing from casing to the components used, everything is very high quality, uh, very well thought out. And I think the price point asking is very fair for that. Um, I do encourage you guys to check it out and listen to it if you have a chance. Uh, this unit is fabulous. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.